Excellent. So, Matt, um, let's talk a little bit more about the story today. Um, so we touched on it in the last video, but if we can expand on that um, now. So, what was the what was the kind of start point, the the, the problem um, from from you know which where this idea came from? Yeah. Um, so, you know, as I've mentioned before, uh, originally we just saw huge amounts of waste of IT that was out there. Um, so, I sold my last business in 2016, essentially, so that we could build a global platform to make use of this capacity. Uh, but selling that business, I then wanted to do some good in the world with my knowledge. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I kind of, I could take my knowledge that I, I knew how to build these big scalable platforms. Um, and if we could make use of that to generate revenue or funding, you know, for charities and good causes, then, you know, I'd be doing something good with that knowledge. Okay. Um, so, you know, Kudo originally started out as Kudo Donate. Um, and the idea was that anyone with any machine anywhere could donate those resources. Um, and they could either donate it for uh, revenue that gets generated on it from doing any type of computing task and donate it to the charity that they want. Um, or that machine can actually be used for the scientific research for the charity they're supporting, like cancer research, yeah. things like that. Um, so that's what we started building right at the beginning in 2017. Um, and to do that, we needed to build a big global cloud platform, you know, um, but we realized actually, as we got more and more into that, we've got to get this technology really right mm -hmm. and then apply the charity piece afterwards. Oh, so you, so, so, we, so, so you are coming back to the charity piece? Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the ultimate goal is, you know, to raise a uh, billion dollars for charity and good causes. And that's either in di direct um, funding yeah. or the equivalent of cloud services for you know, the cancer research and these other types of causes. So sounds like an impossible man, uh, number, but actually if you look at what a device, like a games machine, for example, now, um, if you were to run that uh, full time, this would be, but if you ran that over three years across a million devices, that is actually a billion dollars yeah. yeah. as of today. Um, so, you know, we've been getting huge adoption of our network. It's one of the you know, biggest networks scaling really quickly. Um, we're going to have over a million devices in the next 12 months anyway. So we're, we're really on that journey. But the journey's starting um, with people being able to generate funds for themselves. And then yeah. quickly, we want to go, right, OK, why don't you donate some of that to charity yeah. um, and the good causes so that we can make better use of computing that's in the world, you know, much greener, stop yeah. building servers and data centers, um, and then actually create you know, um, f funding for good causes. Wow, that's incredible. So it's always nice to hear when a, when a company is, you know, it's, it's trying to leave a legacy, trying to do something good, yeah. and it's not just all exactly. about uh, the revenue and the commercial. So yeah, fantastic to hear. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for the breakdown on that. So, um, so coming back onto to Kudo as it is now, uh, when did you really start to think, wow, I'm onto something here? Yeah, so the idea, you know, that I've mentioned is when we went back to kind of 2011, that's when I put together the plan because that's when I saw huge amounts of waste um, of IT capacity from running my last data center business. But the technology just wasn't there. So, you know, consumer networks weren't good enough. Um, you know, broadband wasn't great back then. So you couldn't send big files to end user devices, which means you can't use it. And 3G, 4G was well, it wasn't even around then. Um, so you couldn't use mobiles. So you're limited into, into data centers. Um, consumer and enterprise hardware was really different, whereas now it's virtually the same thing. Um, and also the way you uh, do containerization and virtualization wasn't as mature. Um, so we're using Docker, for example. Um, and it's only kind of get into about 2016 that Docker was mature enough that you can actually build what we wanted to do and do with it securely, safely, and be able to distribute globally on a compute network. So it's kind of 2016, I had the realization that, okay, this is the first time ever that you've been able to build yeah. something like this successfully, because people have tried in the past, but um, without those other blocks in place, it's not really possible. Um, and then with blockchain, kind of taking off from a compute perspective, we're like, actually, and now, it, now we're here as an application um, that we can use it. So using different blockchain workloads, we realized actually, now I can fill all of that compute network with 24 seven demand, and then we can send AI and other compute workloads to those devices so we can instantly monetize any device. So we built, you know, I, I looked at how are we gonna get scale? Cause that's always the challenge. Yeah. 
And there's two sides to our platform. You've got the suppliers, and then you've got the well, suppliers are you know people, mobile phones, computers, servers, things like that. And then you've got the demand, which is where it could be blockchain demand, um, it can be AI, video rendering, and anything like that. Um, so there's two sides to the market. So we're effectively a, a marketplace, yeah. if you think of it like that, connecting suppliers and buyers. Um, and to get adoption, we're like, okay, how, we need to get supply first because what we saw with a load of other blockchain projects was they might have a fantastic project, really good technical team, but they've not managed to get any adoption and they've not managed to get people to keep the nodes running yeah. and stuff. So we realized, okay, we need to build something that people are going to plug in, keep running, you know, they're incentivized to keep running. Um, and that gives us a solid global network. So we, we built kind of a Windows, Linux, Mac version. Literally, it was just download, click a button, and instantly you've got access to those computers' resources. But within you know, five seconds, we were then paying that user for their computing. So we built a platform that could um, monitor all the different types of uh, compute demands mm -hmm. that were on the network. As soon as you install the application, we crowdsource thousands of different combinations of hardware that's out there. So straight away, we know whether it does AI best or video rendering best. And then the network will distribute those workloads out to those devices. So we've, we've taken all this really complex technology and just simplified it into two, yeah. two clicks for the user. Fantastic. Um, and then doing that, that means that anyone could install it. So we, we released it, um, God, it would have been last year sometime now, um, and within the first few weeks, there was kind of 10,000 users had signed up. Wow. And that was just a test yeah. net as well, but it, it was like, okay, this is gonna work. You know, it's proved it, um, it was scaling, and you know, the demand was there. Yeah. Um, so what we've been doing is been, we've been working on getting the technology really right for scale so that we can scale to millions of devices quite quickly. So we've, yeah, we've had about 150,000 users sign up roughly at the moment, um, installed all across the world. Um, tens of thousands of, well, about 20,000 live nodes at the moment, but we've got some big partners going live mm -hmm. at the, where you're going to see a lot more scale very quickly now. And can you, can you give us uh, you know, a few of those partners? Are there any brands, uh, any household names that you can mention here? So they kind of sit in different areas. So if you look at the data center providers that we're working with, we want to work with green data centers because this is about making better use of infrastructure rather than just coal burning data centers, which are all around the place. Um, so we're working with data center providers like Hydro 66 in Sweden. You know, it's completely renewable energy. Um, the site is extremely efficient as well. So they've got really efficient cooling systems that are in there. Um, and our infrastructure runs all of their platforms and enables them to monetize you know, the, the hardware that they've got. Uh, we're working with data, uh, one of the big data centers in, well, the biggest, I think, in Iceland um, called Vern. And our software runs a lot of the infrastructure that's over there. Uh, again, that's a hydro site, yeah. so completely renewable energy. And these are really the projects that we want to work with. Um, so that gives us high quality data center environments. And then on the uh, kind of consumer side, um, to date, all of the consumers and retail side has been people just signing up, but we haven't really marketed or advertised it. It's just been demand from there. But what we've got is our application can be run white label, or it can also be run as a, an application, a compute engine that sits inside other people's applications. And then they can use that to use the resources of the machine and monetize any device that's out there. So we've got providers like uh, Ultra, which is kind of the blockchain equivalent of Steam, uh, which is a games platform that enables people to uh, kind of run um, NFT like uh, games where they can sell it to other people and have a secondary market, um, which looks, you know, it's going to be a really big platform that uh, they've done huge amounts of development. They've got, they've got a partnership that's going to bring about 70 million users on, and mm -hmm. our software is running all of the compute monetization inside that. So it's, so it's integrated into the Ultra platform, is that yeah. right? Yeah, because it's, okay. it's a huge amount of work building one of these compute platforms, and really the, these businesses should be focusing on building you know, whatever their platform is, whether it's a blockchain platform or a games platform. Yeah. So we, we build the compute engine that sits inside it and then they can just integrate that straight in. Okay, and that's, that's, a, that's a very different audience to you know, the service providers, data centers that we've been talking about, blockchain farms. So within, um, you know, as a different audience and if they're, if they're gamers, then what, what's, what's the value that our engine gives to ultra users, platform users? Um, so, well, for uh, ultra users, then gamers, 
typically, their, their devices are available about 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. So 60% of the time, you've got a games machine that sat there um, doing nothing, but you've spent the money and usually they're left on. So it means that, you know, with a, an average graphics card at the moment, it's probably right now, uh, and, and processor is producing kind of $30 a month, but the, the newer graphics cards are producing anything up to about $150 a month, which means if you've got, you're running Ultra software, and you've bought your graphics card, effectively all your games are free after that. You know, you've, you've got a small cost of leaving the device on. Um, but apart from that, you know, you, you paid for your hardware and now it's paying for itself yeah. off games. So it's, it's rather than, you know, the, all these cloud providers just taking all the revenue, mm -hmm. actually, you know, it's going back to the users. Yeah, and the, and the users being paid out in what that audience would paid out, or what's yeah. going to give value to. Yeah, exactly. So um, for Ultra, they, they've got their own token as well. Um, so the users naturally are paid out in the Ultra token. Excellent. Okay. So it's fantastic. So, so the, um, I guess, uh, uh, ideas need to be adopted to be successful. Uh, and the way that, you know, Kudo is looking to achieve that is one, simplicity. Um, the users being paid straight away and 24-7. Uh, and these key integrations with, with partners, would you say that's kind of a fair, fair summary? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we've also, um, so we've got the data centers, we've got the kind of the retail side. Uh, we've also got validators as well, so staking validators. So we're working with a number of uh, validators you'll be seeing going live over the next few weeks. And what that does is that gives us uh, a really high uh, quality environment that is approved. You know, you can see all of the online statistics of those validators. You can see the quality of the environment that they're running on um, and make the decisions of, you know, which validators you want to distribute out your blockchain workloads to. So we've got kind of retail that you can scale huge amounts of compute into you know, literally millions of devices. Okay. You've got data centers where you can scale very high quality, always on mm -hmm. compute demand. Um, and then you've got validators, which is perfect also for blockchain mm -hmm. type compute, um, which runs inside the WebAssembly. So it kind of gives us the whole technology okay. stack. Excellent. So, so blockchain has been mentioned a few times there, but I'm just going to uh, pause on this one. I think in the next video, what we'll do is we'll cover blockchain in a little bit more detail and how that fits into into the business model here. Okay.